Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga program. And yes, what you're watching right now is an original Amiga 500 Plus booting up with a Workbench 1.3. Isn't it great? Let's just wait the whole time it takes to boot. Yeah, this is not uh, an original Amiga 500 Plus. In fact, uh, it's, you know, as always on this channel in my podcast style videos, if those who stick around and actually watch the videos where I explain myself instead of just looking at the thumbnail and watching the first five seconds and getting angry and leaving a comment. <laughs> this is the FS UAE emulator, the Silicon Mac version on a Mac, iMac actually, and uh, it does a wonderful job. As you can see here, we have one meg of chip memory and two megs of fast memory, a very modest system. And the reason I'm making this video is because I wanted to talk about some things. And, and remember, my videos are, like I said, uh, this type of video is more of a podcast. I'm just gonna talk and, and uh, discuss some things with you. I try not to make these too long because I know not everyone is entirely interested in what I have to say. I get it, I understand completely. This was about, you walk into that Babbage's or the Electronics Boutique or your you know local Amiga dealer, sitting on the shelf on demo was either, if you're going way back, there might've been an Amiga 1000 system. Um, in my case, not quite the Amiga 1000. It would have been an Amiga 500 system. And in this case, I know I said I opened this video up, but this is an Amiga 500 Plus, but yeah, an Amiga 500 system, usually it would be connected to a 1080 monitor, a Commodore 1080 monitor. You'd fire it up and you'd look at it and, well, you'd probably never see it the way you're seeing it right now on the screen where it's just like, oh yeah, it uses a GUI or a Windows-based operating system. You know, at that point in the schools, we did start seeing, and at least for my uh, generation, we did start seeing, you know, the Mac, had some, uh, you know, the Mac, the Mac Classic was out, right? So it had its GUI. What you were, what I'm trying to get to here is that when you'd walk into the store, what you might see besides a game running, if it wasn't a game, you might of course see this, right? The classic, the original Amiga Boeing demo. The bouncing Amiga checker ball with a cool little shadow on the grid. Little sound effect as the ball hits the ground and bounces. Super, super awesome. Years later, this would be repurposed for the classic DVD video logo that would bounce around on the screen, right? Yeah, okay. But yeah, one of the great things too is that this demo here is running, right, on the Amiga, and you could just go back to the workbench, the, the GUI, the operating system for the whole Amiga computer. And you could, you didn't even have to do that. You didn't even have to like cover it up completely. And even though I've covered it up completely, guess what? Oh, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. It's still bouncing around in the background. Yes, look at that. Now that was pretty cool. That was a big selling point for a lot of people that were computer nerds. They saw this and were like, um, how is this possible? Because, you know, we had been up to that point, especially uh, if you were stuck on like uh, IBM PCs, it's all just, you know, amber or green DOS type stuff that you're dealing with and simple things. And even on the Apple, which did have some fun graphics routines it could run, very simple stuff. This was just like, how is this program still running? And sometimes this program in the background would be running at a different screen resolution than the other thing in front of it, like this workbench. How is this even possible? And that was one of the cool, you know, things about the Amiga that all of us folks kind of freaked out about. Yeah, it was super, super cool. So you can go ahead and click and pause that and come back here. And yeah, while that's even still running in the background, you've got the rest of, you know, the workbench utilities that it would come with. I mean, you've got things like, remember back in the day, this was, this was cool. Things like the clock and the calculator. Uh, you know, we take all the stuff for granted today, of course, you know, but you know, having a calculator on your computer is handy. You've got your notepad. Every computer has a notepad today, I know, but remember, this is two floppy disks, all right? The workbench and the extras disk. And you've got all this stuff right on your Amiga. And they were selling the Amiga 500 for around 700 bucks, 500 bucks, 800 bucks. It just depends. The monitor was like 300, 400 bucks. It came with like half a mega memory. You could get a mega memory. You could add expansion memory and keep going. 
Of course, the Say program where you could type in funny things like, you know, do you want to play a game? Thermal Global Nuclear War, all that fun stuff. And the Amiga was just a lot of fun. It made me notice computers for really for the first time. Like I had a VIC-20, I had a Commodore 64, but I didn't really understand this kind of stuff. And when I saw the Mac, when I was introduced to the Mac Classic, back in like fourth or fifth grade, whatever it was. It's just so boring. It was black and white and boring and didn't do anything. And I'm like, what, what, you know, this, this kind of stuff, like even just being able to do this really kind of freaked me out. I was like, wow. And one of the things I learned right away was that uh, you don't need to live, you know, live with this, this, this clown color, orange and blue. Go to the preferences program here. I mean, this is really neat that you can actually do this, right? I mean, you can change the GUI from what the designers wanted. Ooh, yeah, we can kind of neutralize the color a bit here. And look at it, look at that, there we go. You don't have to live with that. We can come up here, change this stuff, make it look a little less bizarre. I know some people love the, the default color, but here you go, we've just kind of done that. And yeah, you can do things here, as you can see. Anyway, I just wanted to show, the, the whole reason I went in there was to show you that you can change the colors from the default. I don't know how many times and how many Mega folks I've hung out with who their workbench are booting off a floppy or if they had a hard drive, okay, like, like something like this, they copied the workbench 1.3 to the hard drive, so now they're booting off hard drive, they don't have to deal with floppies anymore. And it's still the, the, the orange and the blue. And I get, some people like the orange and the blue, that's fine, that's good, but you can go into the preferences and change it and actually save it and not have to deal with the orange and the blue anymore. It's really, really nice. Let's go in here into system. What's in system again? Oh yeah, so like some of the, uh, the fun things. The whole like no fast mem, like you've, you just paid all this money for fast memory and then you could just smash this button and it's supposed to get rid of it, I guess, right? Oh, there it goes, gone. No fast memory. Oh well, bye-bye. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, there you go. This was a very brief tour of Workbench 1.3. My thing was like going into a computer store coming out of the Counter 64 era, right? Or even the Apple II era, or maybe you, you had one of the original uh, PC, you know, IBM clones, and then seeing this kind of thing happening, it just, this, this, I was like, wow, computers are really becoming something. They're doing something more than I, I never would have suspected. And yeah, the Boeing demo has been back here this whole time sitting in memory. I can click the mouse and let it run again. Now, yeah, there's some graphic weirdness happening now. This could be emulator related, or maybe a real Amiga would do this too. I don't know. But look, it's still going in the background. How about that? Oh, Amiga. This is why we got so excited. And of course the Amiga would go on to do even better and cooler things than this. The workbench would evolve and do awesome things. And here we are in the year 2024 when this video was made and the Amiga operating system is still going and there's still hardware being made for it. It's freaking bizarre. Like, I don't know what it is. It's that Amiga thing. It's that Amiga virus. It's that Amiga bug we all have and that we love. And it's why people like me who sit at home by themselves and make videos like this, I'm just a fan and I don't, fact check everything, I Google as much as I can, but I just, I'm, you know what it is? I'm so excited to share that, yeah, I probably don't do as much research as I should. I'm just like, I like to share. And you know what, the comment section exists, so you can say, dude, thanks for this video, but it's wrong. Or you can say, hey man, uh, yeah, that was cool. Or, okay, but you don't really know what you're talking about. I get it, I'm fine with that. I don't think that's negative. I actually like the fact that you help inform people and correct stuff that is wrong. That is how we keep this dream alive, how we keep the Amiga going. It's time to end this video. And that's why I'm gonna say right now, before I, well, let's look at this one more time. Boom. All right, I'm done with this video. Boom. Boom.